It's time now for Perspective. My guest today is a man who spent almost four decades representing France on the international stage. From his first foreign posting at the French Embassy of France in Tel Aviv to five years as France's ambassador to the United States, Gérard Arrault has a better idea than most of the challenges facing modern-day international diplomacy. Gérard Arrault, thank you very much indeed for coming on to speak to us uh, here at France 24. Good morning. Good morning. Now, you've just uh, released your memoirs entitled... Uh, Passport diplomatique or diplomatic passport in English. Uh, you were France's ambassador to the US uh, up until just a few months ago. How hard was it for you to make that switch from ambassador to author? Well, actually, it, 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 it came very easily, you know, really, because a diplomat is, is writing a lot. Uh, so it was an exercise of, uh, in a sense, writing, suddenly writing your, your souvenirs. And the souvenirs came very, very easily. So actually, I loved it, and I wrote it pretty quickly. And did you take notes during your time as no, ambassador? No, I never. I never took note. It's really uh, it's uh, my souvenir, the way they were coming to me when I was writing. And actually, right now that the book is here, uh, suddenly I said, "Oh, I, I, I should have I should have added that or that." You know, really. So maybe there would be a second a second <laughs> volume. Now you have been at the, the world of top level diplomacy uh, for almost four decades. What would you say was the most challenging aspect of your job? The most challenging aspect uh, was uh, was to be a negotiator and uh, to be between, uh, frankly, between the, the rock and the art place. Because the negotiator, you have to, you have, in, you are in front of uh, an adversary, uh, and you are trying to fight for your country. But at the same time, you receive instructions from your capital, which very, uh, very often are unrealistic. And, and if you say that to your capital, the capital will say, oh, this guy, of course, is, is always surrendering. So you have to navigate between uh, uh, these, these two problems, you know, really to be too soft for your capital and to be too, too tough uh, for uh, your adversary. Any particular moment that stands out? Uh, the negotiation of 1973, the resolution which was allowing uh, the intervention in Libya, uh, because really uh, the Americans didn't care and we were alone with the British to fight for, 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 for this resolution and, and Paris, which means uh, President Sarkozy was very insisting on getting the vote. And uh, so it, it was a, a tough moment. At the end, we had only 10 votes. We needed nine. So we got the resolution. Now, the job of ambassador is in large part to represent your country abroad. What elements of French culture, French politics perhaps, do you think Americans have the hardest time getting their head around? You know, I, I, I was traveling throughout the US a lot and especially going to the universities because the American universities are, are, are incredible and I had to explain French secularism Aha. and the question of the veil. Mm. And which is so un-American uh, that uh, I had very, very tough talks especially with, with, with students, as you can guess. So the French secularism versus American secularism was, was quite a, a, a challenge, but it was also exciting for me because it allowed me also to see my own country through the eyes of the other side, which is, I think, what a diplomat should, should also always do. And was that a hard thing to do? Did you find yourself in any way coming over to the American way of seeing things? No, of course no. Uh, you know, what is very important for a diplomat when you are a po uh, in any country, uh, you, you, you need to feel empathy. You know, really, you need to understand from the other side. But you shouldn't be sympathy. You should avoid sympathy, you know, really. So that's a very, I guess, a very uh, uh, balance, a very difficult balance to keep. You have to understand the other side, but you don't have to, 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 take, to take the other side. Now, on the night uh, Donald Trump was elected, you tweeted uh, rather famously that it was the end of the era of neoliberalism and that uh, taking, uh, taken in conjunction with Brexit, uh, the world as we know it is collapsing uh, before our eyes. Almost three years on, do you believe you were right then? Of course, I was, I was right. Uh, on the substance, I was wrong in the expression. I shouldn't have sent this, uh, this tweet, which actually remained on my, uh, on my phone only 45 seconds, but became very famous. Yes, uh, Brexit could appear as a sort of a, a British accident, uh, but after uh, the election of Trump, suddenly I realized in November 2016 that actually the French elections in May 2017 could follow uh, uh, this lead. And, and that was the reason of my vertigo. Uh, I was right. 
uh, all the Western democracies now are facing the same populist anger, the same populist uh, rebellion. And is that something that you worry about here in France? Of course. I worry here in France, I worry uh, in Britain, I worry in, in, in Italy. Uh, uh, I think it's, it's critical that we respond to the, the concerns which have been expressed by our citizens. Now, you have been uh, very open in your criticism of US President Donald Trump. What, for you, is his most alarming quality as president? Well, as, you know, in terms of foreign policy, when he says uh, America first, it means America alone. He really he doesn't care about allies. Uh, he doesn't care about shared value or shared history. He's treating each country uh, the same way on the basis of the naked, st stark balance of power. And very often when I'm talking about the, human, the United Kingdom, I think that when the negotiation on the free trade agreement after Brexit will start, I think the British will discover it. And how do you think Brexit's going to go? Is there any way back from this extremely divisive rhetoric we've been seeing in recent weeks and months in the UK? No, I think, uh, as you know, we are talking about populism, and I think, as President Macron has said, uh, and whatever I think personally, or the French diplomacy thinks, uh, I think that the Br Britain has to leave the, un the, the European Union. Uh, the British voters have, vo have decided so, so the, the Brexit has to happen and as quickly as possible now. Now, going back for a second to the United States, uh, Democrats did very much bide their time before launching impeachment proceedings against US President Donald Trump. How do you think this is going to end for Trump? Well, I think, you know, the common wisdom in, in the US was uh, on the basis of the precedent of the, the impeachment against Clinton in 1998, that impeachment could play uh, actually uh, in favor of the president who could appear or who could claim that he's a martyr. And so that was the reason why the Speaker of the House had resisted uh, against, adamantly against impeachment. So I think it's, it's, it's going to go n nowhere uh, because the, the, the Republicans in the Senate, you know, will block, uh, will block it. So we are going to have in the coming weeks and coming months, you know, really uh, an unleashed uh, Trump on one side and on the other side, a lot of uh, uh, details. I really don't know how it will influence the elections in 2020, you know. Now, we have recently heard that the Iranian president uh, recently refused to take a call from Donald Trump on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. Uh, peace talks between the US and the Taliban have collapsed. Do you think we're seeing a decline in the effectiveness of global diplomacy? No, I think... Uh, Really, first, uh, uh, there is the, the, what we have seen already under Obama uh, was uh, the, the fatigue of the United States, basically. Uh, and Obama, you know, look at Ukraine, look at Syria, Obama deciding that the U.S. basically uh, uh, were not concerned. I'm convinced that Obama, Trump, it's a trend, it's not an accident, that the, the Americans don't want to be anymore the gendarme of the world. Uh, and that's... Uh, the policeman we, of the world. Uh, exactly, the policeman of the world, you know, really. Um, and uh, so it means that for us Europeans, we have to draw the consequences of that. Uh, we have to, to take care of our own, uh, our own security. Gérard Arrault, uh, thank you very much for coming on to speak to us here on France 24. Uh, Gérard Arrault, a French a diplomat and author of A Diplomatic Passport, 40 years at the Quai d'Orsay. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.